dirty secrets from Canada's casino industry are finally being spilled. Stories of outrageous money laundering, of suspected crime money coming into government-run casinos, hundreds of thousands of dollars at a time, most of it in $20 bills, night after night, by high rollers connected to gangsters. And no one did much about it. The mob reporter here with news of how the casinos on Canada's west coast were being used and abused by organized crime for years, and how it is finally being exposed. Let me tell you about it. The province of British Columbia on Canada's beautiful west coast is in the midst of a reckoning, facing how it allowed its popular casinos to fall under the spell of transnational organized crime, particularly at the destination casinos around Metro Vancouver. It was so successful in moving money that the way it was done became known around the world as the Vancouver model. Much of it, according to allegations, involved this man, Paul King Jin, but we'll come back to him in a moment. First, the money. Hundreds of millions of dollars in questionable money was being pushed through cashier slots at BC's casinos. What you see here is actual video of some of those transactions. Patrons walking in with plastic bags, suitcases and grocery bags filled with bands on bands on bands. Wads of stacked cash, bricks of bills held together by elastic bands. The money was hardly ever refused. One former head of security said if a customer had identification, he could only think of a couple of times the cash was turned away. Once when it was covered in blood, another when it was partially burned. Links between the suspicious money and Asian organized crime was clear by 2008. How bad was it? One head of casino security investigations said his team couldn't do much to stop the patrons, investigate them, or even ask them where the cash was coming from because the gangs were too strong and confronting them too dangerous. Here it is in his words. You couldn't have asked the service provider to give notice to one of your investigators when a large amount of cash comes in the door let us know so we can come in and interview the person. That's beyond your capabilities as, as special constables. Yes, because they are associated with organized crime. And we don't have the capacity to investigate organized crime or any of the other protections we'd have. Oh, but you could go in and speak to the patron, couldn't you? Patrons often had someone with them. And again, nearby, there was usually somebody that was, that was uh, uh, there uh, just to watch over. The use of government licensed casinos for money laundering is currently under public scrutiny. A commission of inquiry is underway. It is known as the Cullen Commission, named after its commissioner, Austin Cullen, a BC Supreme Court Justice. A major theme that's emerged is the innovative use of casinos to meet the needs of two groups, both of which have a money movement problem. First, there were the drug gangs and crime groups in Canada choking on the cash flowing in from their activities. They need to find a way to launder it, meaning to metaphorically clean it up so it looks like money earned through legitimate means that can be invested without triggering police investigations or government asset seizures. The second group were foreign high rollers, usually visiting wealthy Chinese citizens who love to gamble in Vancouver but couldn't bring their money with them after China imposed money export rules to stem the tidal wave of capital flight. In the casino industry, they call these compulsive gamblers whales, and casinos want whales more than I want your clicks. This is how the Vancouver method worked. A patron is waiting outside a casino for men who are identified as members of a criminal organization. A gangster arrives with two plastic bags full of cash, and the two go into a restaurant beside the casino to try to avoid the casino security cameras. The bags of cash change hands quickly. And as the gangster drives away, the patron, now carrying the bags, walks into the casino. He strolls through the gaming floor to the VIP cashiers and plops them on the counter to exchange them for casino chips. Here's the top-down view from the casino's cash cage. Each of these bundles is about $20,000. Most are $20 bills. Some are 50s. So there's $20,000 here. Here's a second transaction. This guy also collects bags from someone he met outside, or perhaps in a washroom where there aren't cameras. The cash cage view of this transaction shows it's much larger, with more $50 bills. And a third one. 
This reusable shopping bag gets dumped out on the counter by the cashier. Under a newspaper cover, out tumbles half a million bucks. And finally, here's a million dollar transaction. Two men carrying two bags, and they look heavy. And this happened over and over, almost each day for years. The scheme shows the ingenuity and global reach of the gangsters. Casinos at first threw up their arms and said it can't be money laundering because these whales are losing most of their money during their gambling binges. They're walking out of there with almost nothing, not with clean checks that can be deposited into a bank, which is the usual end game in the laundering service. What was really happening was something more sophisticated. The gamblers, the ones going into the casino with the bags of cash, weren't really there to launder the cash. They just wanted to play. But for those coming from cash-restrictive countries, such as China or Iran, they can't bring suitcases of their own cash like they used to. So they pick up the cash in Vancouver. They first must pay for it by moving the money from their bank account in China to another account within China, one that's controlled by the gangsters in Canada or by their associates. Once the gangsters in Vancouver get word that the money's arrived in China, they give the patron the equivalent amount in Canadian cash, which is allegedly the proceeds of their own crime. The money, in essence, moves between countries without ever crossing a border. The Cullen Commission has heard allegations that much of the money was linked to Paul King Jin. The 51-year-old Jin is described as a well-known loan shark. He is suspected of deep ties to gambling and to the running of an underground bank, the kind of underground bank used to facilitate the Vancouver method of money laundering. Jin is a former championship boxer from China, according to reporting by my friends and colleagues at the Vancouver Sun. He immigrated to Canada in 1989, living first in Montreal, then in Toronto, before settling on the West Coast. He opened a spa and later a large gym, fitness and boxing club. He became a Canadian citizen a few years after arriving here. Police found more than $4 million cash in a safe in his apartment in 2015. And he once told an officer, my name is Money. Jin seemed concerned about what might be said about him at the Cullen Commission, so much so he asked for standing, so his lawyer could be involved during the inquiry process. Jin seems to have more to worry about than the testimony. In September 2020, just before live testimony at the Cullen Commission was set to focus on casino cash, Jin was shot at in what was called a targeted attack at a Japanese restaurant in Richmond, B.C. Jin survived, but a man he was with, described as his associate involved in money laundering, died. That man ran a massive underground bank that faced prosecution in a massive money laundering probe called Project E-Pirate. But the case collapsed in 2019 before being prosecuted in court. The bank had ties to China, Mexico, and Colombia. Jin still faces civil forfeiture actions by the province, targeting his gym. He has denied the allegations against him. After weeks of testimony on the casinos, a picture emerges of gaping holes in regulation and enforcement, of a reluctance to risk hurting profits by cracking down on suspicious transactions, and of ignorance, perhaps willful ignorance, to what was really going on. The Cullen Commission hearings continue. The Commission is expected to make recommendations, and who knows, it may bring about change. Bulk cash transactions, meanwhile, were banned at BC casinos at the end of 2018. The question still remains of what damage was caused by more than a decade of virtually unrestrained money laundering, money coming in and going out with a stamp of approval by the government. Thanks for watching.